because they don't get it. They might rape you. Yeah, the yeah, that, well, that's happening. This is political correctness. We have to give up our culture of freedom under their political... Uh, that's a great question. I'm going to go back to you, Bill, but I want to ask Peter Schiff this question. What do you make of the migrant crisis? What do you make of the politically correct, the radical liberals, will never criticize radical Islam. I mean, I don't get it. Why won't the feminists, we've sent reporters and gone to feminist events, they will not say one word about radical Islam, and then they're telling German women, basically start conforming to Sharia law. What, what is the love affair with the left and radical Islam? Well, you know, I think they find it hard uh, to criticize because they don't want that criticism to blow back on themselves because people may be able to connect the dots and see what the similarities are. And, you know, they want to focus on, oh, the countries, you know, where the migrants are going, you know, what's wrong there? Why aren't they, you know, welcoming them the way they should? What about where these people are fleeing and what ideology and what type of governments they're fleeing from? I mean, that is the problem. It's the problem isn't that you know that that they're, that they're coming to certain countries, but why are they leaving the countries that they're leaving? And of course, the only problems would be if these people walk into the you know the social welfare states of these other European countries. Why don't we just that's have it. freedom? You know, it's we the welfare that's drawing it. It's yeah, the welfare. Many, look, we had all these immigrants. Way more immigrants were coming to New York. My grandparents among them. 1880, 1890, 1900, 1910. They were they were flooding in, and there was no problem. They were all absorbed into into the into the culture, into the economy. They were productive. There was no welfare. There was no food stamps. There wasn't a single government program to help the immigrants that were coming to this country by the boatload, far more than the refugees that we have today. But there was no welfare. And it was no problem. There was no welfare and migrants, whether they were from whether they were from Russia or whether they were from Ireland or from England or whether they were from wherever, they wanted to be Americans. Yeah, and they wanted to be Americans, not because there was a government to take care of them, because there was no government to bother them. They wanted freedom. That's what they came here for, and that's what they got, and we all benefited from it. They were escaping mafias. They were escaping. I was reading today how Italy can't even do business. The mafia's taken over. So more Italians want to leave and go somewhere else. I mean, it's the same deal. Just let, let me build my furniture. Let me make my shoes. Let me have my restaurant. Let me build my factory. Get off my back. That's what made this country great. Bill, yeah, anything and, else on that point? Yeah, I mean, it, it put a pit in my stomach after looking at the picture that you had on your story on InfoWars about how... German officials are telling German born and raised women how to dress around these new invaders. And it, it, you showed a girl in a miniskirt and how miniskirts are supposed to be banned now. Just don't do it because you might get raped. I mean, what kind of world do we live in? And I asked a question about a senator here in Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar and Al Franken. They are both begging to bring in more of these Arabs, these Muslims, and here's the deal. Why do Democrat women, feminists, want more Muslims here because Muslims do not treat women well at all? Well, they listen, here's the deal. I don't want to say a lot of Muslims are good, hardworking people. There are a lot of radicals. Islam's becoming radicalized. The West is helping this, and that's a good way to end the interview to ask. The Democrats, on average, I'm not a Republican, but, I mean, Democrats hate America. They hate freedom. They want to mount America's head on the wall. We're like a trophy. And so they're like spoiled kids throwing a fit, wrecking the house. What do you think in closing, Peter Schiff? Well, you know, I, I think I think that this is near the end. I mean, all of this, all the all the stuff that's going on. These are all you asked earlier on the show about signs. This is it. This is not normal, right? I think the the beginning of the end was the 2008 financial crisis. I know you got to go. Know. Dude, one 60 second break, 70 second. Come back and finish up your point of. This is not healthy. This is the the sign of the end, and then we'll let you get out of here. We'll also talk about how folks uh, get put some nice pressure on the president to let your dying dad out. Back in 70 seconds with Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff of Europac.com is our guest. Final segment with him. Then we're uh, going to go back to your phone calls for a segment. Then I've got our reporters in D.C. covering the papal visitation, the socialist nightmare. Trying to get a billion Catholic followers to go against what all the other popes and Catholics were who were anti-communist. I mean, what a nightmare. Uh, Peter Schiff's our guest. You were, you, we were talking about the West wanting to import unskilled people, 90% males, uh, coming in screaming, give me everything free, throwing rocks at everybody. I mean, it really is nightmare images. The media is trying to cover it up. And the caller said, what does this signify? And you said, it signifies that we've entered in insane asylum land, basically, the end. Uh, Put a bookend on that, and, and also how you think we could uh, put more pressure in a nice way on that prison 
uh, and, the, and the Bureau of Prisons to release the political prisoner, uh, Erwin Schiff, your father, because do they really want a martyr on their hands? Do they want him to die in prison? Well, you know, I think they are going to potentially martyr him. Even, even if he doesn't die in prison, you know, he may be dying as a result of his having been in prison yes. because of the incompetent way he was cared for in supposedly a uh, a medical facility. You know, he could have stayed in Otisville where he was enjoying himself and had regular visits, but no, they had to move him across the country so he can get medical attention, and then he got none, and maybe a routine melanoma that could have been uh, cured ended up as a, a life-threatening or death sentence uh, a cancer as it spread throughout all the organs of his body. Uh, so what can people do? I don't know. You know, I mean, you can call a congressman, put some pressure, let him, let him out, get an investigation of, of the prison. I think it's a disgrace what's happening. But if even the people in the prison say, yes, we want to let him out, well, let him out. But this is government. Nothing can be done. You can't make a decision. Everything's got to go through so many different layers of bureaucracy that Things that a private company could do or a private citizen could do in a minute takes the government's months and maybe they can't even get it done. So we have to put some outside pressure because they're certainly not sure. uh, moving on their own. But the final thoughts on this end game. Again, I think this thing started to unravel in 2008. That was the beginning of the end. This is the this is the period, the unwinding of this massive bubble that began in 1971 when we went off the gold standard. It's been a long time in coming. Guys like my dad were criticizing it back in the 70s. He saw it coming from a mile away. And, you know, he may not live long enough to ultimately see the consequences. In fact, if you go and you read my dad's book, The Biggest Con, which came out in 1973, 1974, I still have some copies. You can order them at uh, Schiff Radio. It's a fantastic book, but it's amazing how far into the future my father saw and how much of what he wrote in that book has happened since he wrote it. Well, he's one of the original Patriot leaders, and we stand on his shoulders, and, and I just hope he knows how many people appreciate the work he's done because, uh, I mean, everything he exposed the IRS for political persecution, that's all come out. He exposed yeah. the, 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 the private pro, uh, Federal Reserve. That's yeah, and now. I don't, you know, I don't have many of those books left. And I, I've been autographing the ones that I sell from with my signature. I can't get my dad's signature on, but it's on the bookstore at shiftradio.com, the biggest con. I also have some copies of his book, uh, The Kingdom of Malts, another one of my favorites, which, you know, that's also up there, too. I've got more of those, but I am running very low on, on the biggest cons. But, you know, what people can do about this, look, you know, people make fun of me. Oh, Peter, you know, look, you've been saying the dollar is going to go down. The dollar's gone up. You know, it's gone up, but it's not going to stay up. It's only because people don't understand what the Fed is going to do. They don't understand the bubble in the U.S. economy. They're fooled. They're just as blind as they were. The same guys that are buying the dollar were buying the subprime mortgages. They were completely convinced they were doing the right thing, and they lost everything. The people who are buying the dollar is going to lose everything. People who bet against subprime made a lot of money. you got to bet against the dollar, and the way you do that is you invest outside the U.S. You buy stocks in the few countries that are real safe havens like Switzerland or Singapore or New Zealand. All right. And we're helping our clients do that at your Pacific Capital, your pack.com. Very exciting. I Peter, we're out of time. Thank you so yeah. much. We'll pray for your dad. Thank you so much. We'll be back. Stay with us. We're going to go to your phone calls here in just a moment. I was just listening to one of those news pieces during the break that Darren McBreen produced. And I'm glad he did that because it was in the stack and I hadn't covered it yet. I need to do a detailed report on this because... Two years ago, we had an article headline, Pentagon promises to stop lying because of Drudge Report. And I gave it that headline because they, they talked about the Drudge Report and said we can't lie because the Drudge Report and sites like it can expose us in real time. But I also gave it the headline because the media was in a big demonization campaign against the Drudge Report at that time, and I knew they'd probably pick it up, and they did. And it would then backfire against them. And I point out in that article that a month before they'd, quote, legalized in Congress, removed a law, repealed a law that banned the CIA domestically planning false news and information and other federal agencies. The Governmental Accountability Office a few years before had said it was illegal, it was already going on, but that it should be... It should be stopped. So Congress's answer, it's kind of like when Congress got caught eight years ago, insider trading. They passed a law the next year legalizing insider trading 
for Congress. That's like a pedophile being caught, and so you, you know, then Congress passes a law saying it's okay. Hey, I don't care if Congress passes a law saying pedophiles can rape kids. I catch you going after my kids, I'm going to beat your brains out. And it's not a threat. I'm going to kill you. So just default. You try to torture my kids, try to rape them, try to kill them, I'm coming after you. Uh, there isn't any mammal out there worth its salt that won't fight for its young. And that's the ultimate final domination. Your kids belong to us. Uh, we're going to give them inoculations. Parents, you know, aren't the parents. I mean, this is a rubbing your nose in it activity by a cult of scum. Good people don't desire the power. The scum does. Good people, the smarter someone is, the better they are, the nicer they are, the cooler they are. In my experience, the more reclusive they are. The more they don't want to tell people what to do, the more they don't want employees, the more they just got a few friends, people they like, hobbies they like, they want to be left alone. I mean, the older I get, uh, people think I'm an extrovert overall, and I can be when I need to be, but no, the truth is I, I, I like to be alone or with just a few people. I'm very introverted. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest guy since sliced bread, but, you know, I don't want to screw folks over. I really care about people getting a fair shake. I don't dislike people that are smarter than I am or better looking or more successful. I admire them. And I thought growing up everybody was like me. Well, everybody isn't like us, folks. The listeners of this, audience, of this show are good people. I've met you. I know you. And so we don't want to be in control. We don't. But if we don't take the country and the world back, the scum's going to be in control. So we got a job to do. And we can beat these people. But another whistleblower, there's over... 500 of them now that have gone public. It was 50, then 200, then 300 more. Former head of defense intelligence, the general, deputy head of the CIA, saying, yes, we're, we've been told to lie about Al-Qaeda and ISIS. They're taking over everywhere. We're helping them. It's horrible. And really, that's a cover their butt exercise because it's so bold to fund people murdering every Christian they get their hands on. And Obama, through his family in Kenya... They're in northern eastern Africa sh shipping money into the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, this is really dastardly. I mean, this is, there's a new James Bond movie coming out with Spectre. I mean, Spectre are cupcakes compared to this, okay? I mean, these are really bad people. And folks say, well, why are you still on the air? Well, I've been threatened. They've tried to buy me off. I've been attacked over the years. But it's been silent. You know, I get demonized and, and I get assassinated in the media now. I mean, just yesterday, without really looking, I saw in my inbox, Houston Chronicle, was it New York Daily News, uh, other newspapers, just with flat-out lies about what I say and what I stand for. So, I mean, I guess I should be glad they're just trying to assassinate my name. But it doesn't really matter because the message already got out, so you can destroy me all day long. If you're too obvious about it, it makes me a martyr which is answering the question of why I'm still alive. But they're moving into a very reckless phase. I don't know. There may become a time where they come lock me up, make something up. I mean, who knows what it'll be? I just hope you realize whatever it is, and I hope it doesn't happen, because I need to take care of my children. But if it does, it does. It's just part of the, part of the deal. I mean, I think I'll be fulfilled if they set me up or put me in prison or kill me. I don't want to be fulfilled. My flesh doesn't want to be fulfilled. But that really is probably my destiny. And I hate to speak such things aloud, but I just want to say I'm a winner. I didn't screw anybody over. I'm not a parasite. I love everybody who stands for justice. And I hate those that want to dumb people down and control folks. And, and people just have to make the decision what side you're on. Because as you can see, it's rapidly approaching the time where you're not going to be able to sit in the middle anymore. Do you support harvesting babies' organs? Do you support pedophilia? People are like, man, I'm getting all these emails. You said they'd announce pedophilia next in the next few months, and it's happening. How did you know? Man, it's not hard to know. These people are evil. I, mean, I know them. I've studied them. I've gotten inside their minds. And if people could get inside the elite's minds, when I go to your calls, you would realize there's no... No question they got to be fought. I mean, even if you're a lazy person, you realize how horrible it's going to get under this? They want tyranny in place because they know you're going to stand up and fight back.
They want tyranny in place because they know it's going to get so bad, you're not going to have a choice but to fight back. 